Hello Cancer, welcome to January 2018. Happy New Year, thanks so much for being here. I'm, I'm doing this really relaxed intro for you guys this month, not like a super formal astrological highlight like I've been doing. Um, we have Uranus going direct in Aries, okay? And for you, I mean, now all the planets are moving forward. I'm sensing with the sign of Cancer that there is now enough distance between where you are now and where you have been, right? That things are starting to become very, very clear. You are starting to feel a sense of gratitude for everything you went through. And you're starting to say, wow, I'm, if, it could, if it wasn't that way, I would never be where I am today. And that's always true. I think we're always, you know, periodically having those moments where we look back and say, oh, it couldn't have been any other way. But it's that sense of gratitude that gives you so much power. You are truly breaking free from an energy that has been just like clinging to you. And there's a sense of like, I think people are going to be very attracted to you this month you are going to be attracting really positive things into your life this month as well. And there's going to be just an overall sense of, wow, I can do anything. Like, I really can do anything. If I could do that, then I can do anything. You're going to be really connected with your higher self or with your subconscious this month too, where all that darkness stuff just doesn't really feel that dark. And it feels a lot more natural and it feels a lot more like guidance than it feels like that nagging, like you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. It's more like, you know, the cricket on your shoulder that says, hey, what about this? And you say, okay, and you just move forward. So it's going to be relatively smooth, I believe, for, for a lot of you. So really exciting reading for you. I think this is one of the best readings I've had this month. So Let's go ahead and begin. Thank you guys so much. Take care and I'll see you in February. Bye. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to January 2018. We made it. Happy, happy new year to all of you. Let's begin. I had three cards pop out almost immediately when I started shuffling. So it's like, okay, well, <laughs> they have something they really want to say to you. The first card that came out was judgment. We have judgment. We have the emperor and we have nine of swords in the reversal position. Judgment is a Uranian quality, and we have this Uranus going direct transit on January 2nd. And this lends itself to a little bit of a rush because it's happening in Aries, a fire sign, which is an aggressive sign anyway. And it's going to give you a sense of clarity, a sense of understanding, and a lot of understanding about all the stuff that you've gone through. You could feel impulsive. We even have the other card or the card of Aries here. There could be some kind of impulse or some kind of action that you feel compelled to take, whether that's for yourself, whether that's for another person, Okay, or maybe someone does something to or around you in your space, all right, in your energetic space. And I don't see it necessarily being bad. What I see is that it lends itself to a release of all this pent up stuff, a release of thoughts. Any of you who have been kind of foggy, I feel a sense of clarity there for you. I feel like Sorry, I don't know. I don't know what I feel. I'm getting like 12 different things. But, you know, a nine of swords reversed is like perspective on the nine of swords where the stuff that has been kind of festering and lingering, it has been building up over a great deal of time. You're starting to see it for what it is. 
you're starting to see it as an extra added weight, as a complication, as something that is no longer needed. I feel this judgment card is an exhibition of just that, good judgment. A sense of finally knowing the truth or of finally knowing which way you need to go or what you need to do in order to just fully release that. I think a lot of you are getting very tired of carrying this darkness on your shoulders. And I think it's running parallel to a lot of really positive things in your life. And it's just this one thing that just can't quite seem to dissipate or to dissolve. And there's a welcomeness about this new year. It's very welcome. It's very much anticipated. But I, I think there's still a little anxiety about it as well. Where you are kind of holding yourself back, but still going with the flow at the same time. I mean, you, you can't not go with the flow. Judgment, boom, Uranus. You know, Uranus is very unexpected, very random very much like, oh, whoa, where the heck did that come from? And so it's circumstantial, you know? Let's go ahead and get some more cards for you. I don't know why... I feel like this month, everyone's mind is very sharp. Everyone is being very clear-minded, very sure. And there's, there's a, a kind of a weird superhero-like or superhero-esque sense of unstoppability. The Empress, beautiful, and the Page of Cups. Can we get the emperor and the Emper empress? How beautiful. Uh, so this is how I see it. This is not an actual tarot thing. This is just kind of me. I see the emperor and the empress as being the, the consolidation or the perfect form of a person. I see it as being all the kings consolidated to, to, to form that divine masculine perfect divine masculine and all the queens that consolidate to create that perfect divine feminine. Now that's not, not really, you know, I mean, that's just kind of is, is what it is, but I, I think that there's a wholeness about each of these. All right. There's wholeness to each of these. And we have a Mars and we have a Venus. All right. The, the greatest love affair in, uh, you know, Greek and Roman mythology, Aphrodite and Aries, you know. And, and I think that there's, for, for many of you, there is love in your life. For many of you, there, there are very, very, like I said, there's positivity running parallel to this. And I think it is that positivity that love, I, I do feel love, I really, really do. Whether it's actual, you know, romantic love or platonic or familial love or even just love of you toward the good of humanity, that unconditional love, whatever it is, it is the love in your life that sheds light and puts this Nine of Swords in perspective. And I think it shuts it down. Because look, both of these cards here are looking in toward one another. The energy is geared toward one another. And there's um, like too much light that this Nine of Swords darkness cannot survive. It just snuffs it out. And that's the release that you really we all have been craving and all have really been needing. And the Page of Cups comes in and represents something quite lovely, whether it is someone romantically coming into your life or just a new creative opportunity, 
something that can provide emotional fulfillment at its highest level. She represents the power of creation, you know, and there is a, a child in this particular card. Some of you may be having children or thinking about having children. Um, some of you may be talking about getting married. I mean, I even have like this church here. That's kind of, you know, I try to make it more of an ominous judgment type of thing, you know, but, you know, maybe there is some of that in the cards for you guys, for some of you. Let's create life, whether human form or creating life within ourselves. Because you, there has been a sense of, of being bogged down. This Nine of Swords is undeniably heavy, undeniably frustrating. And in that reversal position, like I was saying, it weakens the intensity. It's dissolving. It doesn't have grounding anymore. There's no traction, right? It's slipping. And you're distancing yourself from whatever caused this. And the distance or the time between all this stuff and where you are now is getting to that breaking point where to hang on to it at this point requires more energy than, than not you would have to be more active or proactive and spend more time and energy to be aware that you want to cling on to this, you know, because there's a point in time where this is just all around you and it's all consuming and there's really nothing you can do. But it's that breaking point where if you want to hang on to it, you're going to have to work to hang on to it. And it's easier now to just like, Put it behind you and it, that's where it's going it's getting put in its place and look the sun the stark contrast between the sun and the shadows and this represents a shadow and these two representing the sun the sun is coming in and blocking out those shadows the sun is rising and the five of wands Sometimes we do feel that life is a little complicated, you know. Sometimes we do feel that people around us don't want to see us succeed. People around us don't want us to be free. They want us to remain oppressed or suppressed. And there comes a point when we kind of need to say no more and to take control of that and to take control of those those circumstances in our life. The thing is, a lot of people have opinions about what we should do, who we should become, how we should get there, and all sorts of things. But the reason why I put this card there, or this particular image on this card, is because a lot of times the frustration just comes and the arguing and the pettiness and like that, like feeling of congestion. It merely comes from egos. And yet we're all still trying to get to the same place. And so if we can learn or figure out how to put our ego aside, sometimes that journey is a little bit easier and it flows better and not only do we simplify things for ourselves, but we simplify things for those we love for those people that we love and I, I think you're getting to that point now you have look how many major arcana you have emperor empress judgment and now justice these two coming out together like, it's a big deal. There is an emptiness here with justice. Because justice doesn't care about your ego or your friends or your, your husband's or your wife's ego. Egos are irrelevant when it comes to justice being served. Justice is the ruler of the rhythm of the universe. And when it comes out upright... 
I feel like you are finally getting that break that you deserve. And this Uranus going direct transit, this being a card ruled by Uranus, this Uranus direct, that's your break. And I think you're going to feel this rush. Okay, it might not be loud, it might not be obvious, but it's just going to be this undercurrent of things just operating more smoothly. And even in the face of adversary, five of wands, there does still seem to be progress being made. Okay, because you all still want to get to the same place. You all still want to do the same thing. There's a common goal. There's common interests. And so somehow you find a way to work it out where everyone's ego can be appeased and, and it can just move forward like a machine. Okay? Justice is a cold observer. And it just sees what is. And what I think it's seeing, okay, is that now there is a readiness, an intrinsic readiness for you to release this Nine of Swords. And it will provide opportunities for you to do that. Like I said, some of you may be getting married or entering into that kind of an arrangement, all right? Because Aries, you know, Mars, um, Aries ruled by Mars, Uranus moving direct, there is this like, highly impulsive vibe about it, you know? And so some of you may be taking big leaps and taking big bounds and taking chances. And you know what? For those of you who do, I see it working out well. And the Page of Swords, another page. Pages are exciting. Pages are, they add spice and flavor to readings, you know, because it's people coming in and people going out and people talking to you and, and new messages and new people being introduced into your life. And pages are kind of that secret messenger, <laughs> the secrecy. Uh, not, I mean, it's not secret, but it's just like we don't give them enough credit for their power and their ability to change the direction of our lives because they're so just like we're just so used to it we're used to things coming in we're used to people contacting us we're used to talking we're used to this stuff and the page of swords can indicate a new way of looking at things it can indicate a lot of questions it can indicate new directions but really the way i see this the most is breaking free because page of swords swords being an air quality it's about fresh air it's about a new perspective again look she's even the foundational card for both judgment and the nine of swords new perspective new ways of understanding new ways of seeing things and gratitude often accompanies a page of swords gratitude for what for what pushed you through that Nine of Swords situation, right? See, Cancer, you have Gemini in your 12th house, and that's the ruler of your subconscious, the ruler of your imagination and your dreams. And it's a very active placement. So you do have a lot of thoughts. You're, yes, you are emotion. You are, you know, kind of that emotional sign. There's depth there. There's a high, high, high level of intuition. Well, yes, of course, there's intuition there. Gemini ruled by Mercury in your 12th house. You have this ability to transfer in and out of the, the physical realm and the spiritual realm like that, you know, and so the fact that you have that connectivity lends itself to just intelligence overall. And it seems to be like your intelligence here, emotional intelligence, intuitive intelligence, well, whatever you want to call it, is really giving you a lot of favors. 
and it is allowing new things to enter. There are no blockages right now. There are no uh, roadblocks. There are no obstacles. And the devil reverse, another major arcana. Interesting that we have the major arcana in like this star position, right? All in the diagonals being accented by just a few numbered cards, which tells me that it's a, a momentous occasion. <laughs> it's a momentous month for you. Devil in reverse is, and I let me explain this card if I may. Why is there just a bush or a tree with a reflection? Because I, I view the devil as being the physical realm, right? Or being that inescapable mirror where we cannot escape our own reflection, right? Just as as surely as when we wake up in the morning, brush our teeth, do our makeup, do our hair, shave, whatever we do, we look in the mirror and there is absolutely no doubt in our minds that that mirror is reflecting back an accurate appearance of what we look like. But the same is true in our relationships. The same is true in our, our daily choices, what we do in private, you know, all sorts of things. It's a reflection of who we are and it's inescapable. And sometimes we do get pushed to that limit where it's really, really hard to see and it's hard for us to understand because we think we are a certain way, but yet our circumstances dictate that we are in fact a different way. And that's when it gets tough. That's when the devil comes in and is like really, really harsh. But there's a release of that. There's an acceptance of that reflection and there's flexibility here. And if there are things in your life that you don't like, you are changing your reflection, you're changing your circle, you're changing your attitude, your perspective, new perspectives, huge, huge, huge for you in January. And I, I think you are coming to that intrinsic understanding of your ego. You're coming to that intrinsic understanding of how your relationships with others is a reflection of who you are. Okay, and I know that there's going to be some pushback on that and there's so many philosophies of the as above, so below and, and, you know, but at the end of the day, we just all want to just be happy and we all just want peace and tranquility in our lives. You know, and I said this in another reading a few months back, I don't even remember which one, but like peace is such an underrated quality. You know, like we all want um, security and we, we say we want happiness. We say we want success. We want abundance. But this is peace. And I think that is the ultimate goal, really. And I think you're getting there and you're coming to that understanding of what that truly means for you. This is a very, very welcome card. And I'm so happy that we got it because you are making great strides in your life. I'm getting chills, like, wow, like, holy cow. I did that just kind of hit me what I just said. The magician, the card of self mastery. I think a lot of you are going to get into the quote-unquote zone. You're going to tap into that flow. You know, this guy's been making an appearance as well where there is, when a, you know, when a musician sits down to play the piano or an artist picks up the paintbrush and, you know, a dancer puts on the dancing shoes and they just go what accompanies that or where that inspiration comes from is true connection with the higher self. And because you have Gemini in that part of the sky, you could very easily and very quickly turn that on and off whenever you really want to, you know? And I think that there is newfound control over yourself over your thoughts, 
you start to see yourself as a physical body, an emotional body, a mental body, and a spiritual body. And you're starting to understand what all that means, you know. And so there, there comes real power here. Your relationships begin to flourish. Your happiness begins to, you know, rise. Your spirituality becomes more important. Your desires seem to dissipate, you know. A lot of this pain truly is desire-based. High Priestess, another major arcana. And yes, I did put myself in the deck. I had to put myself in the deck, and I, it was hard for me to like be like, which one should I be? Friend captured this picture. I was watching uh, videos on YouTube one night, and I don't know. There, there was kind of a cool picture, just like one of those accidental, like, look at me, and you look, and he takes a picture. And there's something like, because um, the high priestess represents that secrecy. It represents the subconscious and the imagination. It represents that very thin veil between our perceived reality and the spiritual realms. And she's the messenger. She's the gatekeeper, the high priestess. And she is only going to lift the veil when you call upon her to do so. And she is the keeper of, of secrets, right? And she is going to represent the freedom from this. No longer is, is it suppressed. I mean, the high priestess coupled with judgment and justice, there's no containing it. You know, like these three work in tandem to just like push it out. It doesn't want to be there anymore. Whoa. Okay. That was, the, oh, in the world. Another major arcana, guys. <laughs> Holy cow. I don't think I'd pull out this many major arcana in a reading ever. Ever. The world. And, you know, what, what can I say about this is the end. The end of the cycle. The end of the, the whatever, the chapter. All right. This is a Saturnian card. Saturn. Uh, Saturn coming into your life, and this is also a card of Saturn. But see, the thing that's beautiful about Saturn, you guys, is that, yes, it's hard we learn through experience, and yes, we did have to kind of push and shove our way, way through, but at the end of it, it is that wisdom. You know, and they always say that knowledge is the only thing we take with us. And that's what, what you have acquired is that wisdom and that knowledge. And there's nothing more valuable than that. And I believe that most of you are going to understand what that means. And that's where gratitude comes in. Once you have that true sense of gratitude, you can walk through this door with your head held high, honored, that you were able to go through what you went through. And now you have this like thing in your mind, like now I can truly give back. Now I truly have something more to offer, right? Whether it is in your relationships or in your community, whatever, your career, whatever. And this is earned, right? This is a rite of passage. You've released yourself from those those binds and you've earned that right to walk through the door so it's beautiful beautiful reading oh my gosh cancer holy cow i wish you guys nothing but the best but i don't really think you need my well wishes <laughs> but i do wish you very very well um as you move forward into this beautiful new year thank you guys so much and i will see you next month in february thanks